Alrighty folks, this is Bill from Iona Homestead, sometimes posting under Little White Dory. But um, what I decided today was I'd put a little video together on what I've learned, where I'm heading in 2023. Um, not scripted, just kind of, you know, I brought up a few uh, things that I want to talk about, and I'll give a description of how I get to where I am. So the short Reader's Digest version of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, Pre-COVID in 2017-18, I was looking for a property in northern New York um, in an area known as Dutchess, uh, Columbia County, south of Albany, north of Hudson, and around Hudson, New York. And um, I had found a place, thought it was going to work out, everything was wonderful, things were moving along. The only problem I had initially was that the um, closing date was going to be June, and that pretty much meant that I'd lose that year's ability to do much in the way of farming. Um, accepting that, I said, okay, you know, I'll do what I can, make the best of it. If it's a good property, it's a good price, it's worth it. So I decided I would start here at home in Long Island um, seedlings and figuring, hey, you know, I've, I've barely ever had any opportunity to start seedlings to know what I'm doing. I should start practicing, at least getting some sort of knowledge. So I bought, I believe, 10 72 cell trays um, I want to say it was, maybe it was 20, um, and I bought some uh, seedling containers that um, I thought would be good. So, for instance, this one right here, it's a hard, um, reusable uh, six cell or 72 in a 10 by 20 tray configuration. Um, and I thought, you know, the, the depth of this, you know, it's about an inch and a half maybe across, whatever. But this, this would be fine. The amount of potting soil or starter soil I could put in here would be enough to work. So I bought uh, an, a matching number of these to go with um, the number of trays. So I think, so was, let's say it was 20 trays. I think I bought, yeah, that's probably what I did. I bought 10 trays for this style um, holder and 10 trays that were actually just trays, okay? A tray that, well, I'll take these out and talk about them later. Um, these trays, in this particular configuration, is 50 cells per tray. And it's slightly different, you know, in cell size. If I hold it up, you can see that there's slightly more space in here. So, interestingly, that these would hold, oh, excuse me, this doesn't hold 72, I'm sorry. I can go into the wrong one. This one, you can actually see that it doesn't quite fit in, but if I had a 72 cell, which I have some of them, these would fit right in. So you can do it in a tray like, you know, cells like this or a tray with cells like this. Now this one's 50. I have them ranging from 200 down to, I think, 18 maybe, something like that, something small. So uh, uh, while I, since I showed it already, I think the same year I may have also invested in this type of a tray which is, as I hold this up and sort of demonstrate, you can get individual smaller um, containers to fit in here. Now, these were purchased from the same manufacturer as these trays, and you can see there's a space in here, so it's not the most efficient use of space, but if you're growing something that needs a lot of air circulation, this actually isn't so bad. With that said, I have now decided that I would switch over to this type and as you see they fit in differently I'm going to try to just demonstrate the few that I have here these if you look at it if I take this out and put it here it does not reach all the way to the bottom okay so that means I can't bottom water this style cup which means eh, there's an inconvenience the way I have to water this will be more from above and Maybe you could say more messy, you know, it's not something you'd want to do inside in the basement of your house. So I'm contemplating this style of growing in lieu of these types of multi-cell trays, which I have to transplant, okay? If I'm using a, a, a pot this size, which I can buy, uh, I think I bought it, 800 of these for $100, $120. they are kind of a softer... Not that they can't be reused. They certainly are sturdy enough to reuse them. I haven't thrown them out. I've, I've saved the ones that I might have, you know, either had a, a plant or seedling die or whatever transplant. I save them. They're, they're reusable. But they're lighter weight, and I don't mind selling this and not recovering it. 
in other words, send it out in one direction. Um, last thing I'll start showing is this is another thing for this year. I've had in the past um, some three-way planters like this that were much bigger. So maybe the outside was three times the size. I have a silly puppy over here that's acting up. He's playing on the, on the carpet, so if I'm distracted, I'm sorry. So this um, little thing here uh, gives me the ability to have four different seedlings in one container. And I'm also using, in this particular example, these uh, Jiffy Pucks, which uh, I at first was skeptical of them, and I've concluded that they have their place, and this would be a good example. I can grow these, well, let's backtrack here a little. I can get them to grow individually in there, so you get one in each. And that's, um, it gives it, if I do that, I get a height that supports a little bit. I can always backfill with topsoil afterwards, but I can start them in a tray like this, and then I know they're growing, I can transplant them out into this, and I'm thinking parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme. If I can get four herbs growing in one of these, this is technically like a $20 item, and I'm paying $1.20, well, no, it's actually $1.25 for three of these. So let's call it 50 cents. I'll even go to the extra. So a little less than 50 cents each, but it'll yield a substantial return versus me selling individuals like this and hoping to get either a dollar or two dollars each, depending upon what I'm growing. So how does that get back to this farm? So what happened was the farm fell through and in the, in the processes of learning how to do these seedlings and growing them in trays and so on in my basement under lights, I have plenty of videos showing that. You can always go back and see that. The, the deal fell through on the farm. And after I already started, it was, I guess, 1,400 tomato plants, uh, the question became, well, now what do I do with my tomato plants? So it was beginning of, I guess, April when the farm fell through. Um, Actually, no, I take that back. It, it fell through kind of last minute, but I had started these seedlings earlier, figuring that, you know, maybe I'd be able to talk her into letting me bring them in and, you know, plant some stuff or something. I don't know. But I had now 1,400 tomato plants and no place to put them. Uh, my property here is only about a third of an acre, and it wasn't at the time set up even in, with a garden for a vegetable garden. So I um, had to come up with an idea of what to do with them, and the, the, the goofy idea was just because I could what if I transplanted them and tried to sell the seedlings off of my front lawn, kind of like a garage sale? So I did. I transplanted. I found that I could use a solo cup, a red solo cup, drill a hole in the bottom, make it into a flower pot, and then um, put them out on the table and just, you know, say they were organic, so organic heirloom tomatoes um, for sale. And needless to say, I sold, or I got rid of 1,400 tomato plants. Um, I gave away a lot, but I did have a lot of fun. Lesson learned, you can sell tomato plants on the front lawn of your property if you live where I live and are creative enough to decide to do it. <clears throat> so, that was the first year. Second year comes along, and um, this is now pre-COVID, okay, just before COVID. And I'm getting excited because I'm thinking, hey, this was fun. There'll be something to do in the spring again, and I'll do it a little more organized. And, you know, I can make it more into a, I don't say a business, but uh, something more viable. So we did our research. Um, we went and got better equipment, and, you know, studied up on fertilizers and lights and, you know, getting air circulation. And I, and I made, I'll say, a better system for starting seedlings. And I thought, well, maybe I could double my production. So from 1,400, maybe I could go to like 2,500 tomato plants and see, could I sell that many? So early January that year, as is most of uh, the time, farmers and, and you know, garden enthusiasts want to get their gardens growing early as they can. I have to hold and go move, take care of a dog. Hold on. Okay, so I'm editing this in because I realized when I was doing my editing that I had started down a path and telling a story about the uh, how I got started, and then I got distracted by the dog and didn't finish it. So after I had had one successful year, I decided to double to about 2,500 seedlings and improve efficiency and build greenhouses and make infrastructure and, and make it easier and more efficient to grow tomato plants and then sell them from my front lawn. Um... I then the following year, 
That was second year was very sick. Oh, well, so let me add in the second year. That's where I, I get sidetracked. COVID then comes, all right? So I got my seedlings started earlier than I should have because that's what people do when they don't know what they're doing. Uh, COVID starts and I think, oh, well, so much for the second year of doing this. It's probably going to be a disaster. Everything's shutting down. Uh, not going to be able to sell anything. Not going to be able to interact with people. So I kind of mothballed everything thinking that's it. I'll maybe try again the following year. I probably made it about a month into COVID and after being so locked up in the house said the heck with it I'm going to start I'm going to grow even if I throw them out I don't care I'm going to try it just for, I got to try this grew 2,500 plants or doubled production and much to my surprise while everything grew really well I had peppers growing well I had tomatoes everything was going really really well um, it turned out that the ability to go to the local retail big box you know Home Depots and the gardening shops was so diminished by people's inability to get out of the house and it had begun to affect the, uh, what do you call it, the inventory, right? The supply chains were breaking down. Lo and behold, I wind up being the guy that has pepper plants when none of the local suppliers had them. I didn't have a lot and I didn't have great looking plants. In fact, they were pathetic, but because I was the only guy in town, I was able to sell the peppers that year. So in the, in the second year, I grew peppers with tomatoes. Third year comes now, I say, okay, let's see if I can double production again. That was last summer. Last summer, I was able to get about 3,500 tomato plants um, up and out. I counted about probably 4,500 starts, but I lost uh, quite a bit of peppers. I lost almost all the peppers. And everything else worked out fine. I you know could have probably done better had I... Um, push the marketing or, um, you know, advertisement or better signage, whatever. I could do things and I will. But this year, it's now going to be a, an effort to get things, um, more varieties ready at the same time by using different growing um, specs, meaning less plants per tray, more trays, and each tray a different variety. So I'll have... Um, you know, roughly the same size with tomatoes, and roughly the same size of tomato plants in pots that I don't have to transplant. And that's key because that's a lot of labor. It is the biggest part of my labor is the transplanting. And it's also a good return on value, so don't get me wrong. It's not that it's not worth it. But if I can grow something in a container and sell it in the container without transplanting, that's best. And that said, um, I'm going to start showing you the pictures that I have of the seedlings I bought, and I'm going to cut back into the original video. Okay. I guess I'll have to do some editing. So um, I did get now, I would say, I don't think I bought more of these because after the first year, I realized that the advantage to these are... Oh, I got to see. This is what the other camera is going to come in here. Hey. Hey, could you just cut it out? Ah. I don't think you're going to cut it out. I'm going to have to probably put you outside now. All right. These two who just came inside, I probably should have wiped his feet off, but I didn't. Ah. And then this one's now going to be a terror because he's a puppy and wants to play. So I'm probably going to wind up putting him outside now for a little bit. Let's get back. So um, I had used these... Uh, it was half of my, I think half of the seedlings I had were in this, so figure seven, what was it, I said, uh, 70, 720 of them would have been in this, and the 720 would have been in this type of a tray, where, you know, it's a whole tray of 72. And what I found was that um, it's amazing how much you can torture seedlings and transplant them, give them a little sunshine, water, and warm air, and they take off. You can... You don't have to treat them so uh, gingerly. I suppose the more you do, the better, but um, I found these to be tricky. I use them, but they're now gonna be phased out. I'm gonna sell these off with six plants in each. So it'll be six seedlings in each. That's the objective. And I'll sell this either as six of the same thing, perhaps like in the sense of zinnias or flowers. I'll sell it as one six pack for, I'm going to say $5 for one six pack. I don't know if that's going to be reasonable. Maybe it'll have to be $4, maybe even less. I'll, I'll start out and work my way down. But I'm not known for flowers yet, so I, I'm hesitant on doing a lot. But to use these up, I will plant something here and sell them as six packs this year. Because I found them to be 
I mean, I can clean them, but that's a lot of effort. I'd rather maybe in this case, just have it one way, you know, fill it, put a seed in it, grow it and ship it out. Because in this case, this size plant for a tomato, if it's not sold within a certain period of time, it's going to be root, root bound and I'll have to transplant them. So I'm going to try to avoid it transplanting. And that brings me to this, you know, smaller, softer. I'm going to try to grow in here. It's going to be more material to start, but no transplant after this seedling gets going. Um, that's the objective. This will be started in these peat pucks, different things. I'll start six or so trays of herbs now, probably, because they grow slow. And I'll just drop each little puck into um, those holders when they're ready, and then backfill them with more um, potting soil. I think that's going to work out well. Uh, I look forward. I bought about, I don't know, maybe 30 of these, or 30 packs of 30. So it's maybe I have like 90 of them. And think about it. If I have 90 of these and I can sell them for $5 a piece, maybe even these will get more. If I'm thinking that the other thing will be five, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I have in front of me my binder that has all the um, seed packets. and just hold it up like this for a second, and then I put it down. And what I'm going to do is go a quick flip through the seedlings that I had last year. And I'll do that on my other camera while it's seeing, th seeing things just a little easier. So... Um, some things I have photocopies of because I use them as uh, a display. So I'll put a protective sleeve over it, and now I can keep this as a display for me. I use it with a paper clip or a clothespin on a string hanging above the seedlings. So some of these I held on to because I'm going to do them again, and I figured no sense having to reprint them if those look good. Um, from here, you know, I'm just going to show you that these are the samples of zinnias that I had. Um, a bunch of different varieties. I lost a bunch of them to the frost early last year because a heater in my greenhouse failed. But you can see there's quite a variety of flowers that I had last year, and I'm hoping that people will remember that I had them, and the few people that did buy hopefully will come back, and perhaps it'll catch. Some sunflowers, um, herbs. A lot of these seed packs still have seeds in them, and I'll be going through them eventually to see what I want back from last year if there's any seeds left. In the case of most of these seedlings, I probably will only do one tray. So for instance, here's an example, the ahi chapata pepper. It may not even have, let's see, does the backside have it? Yeah, it is a 15 seed pack. So maybe it came with 25 or so seeds. If I have one of these trays over here that are multi-seed, I could possibly do this so that it would um, uh, be a full tray of those peppers. But Honestly, I'm not going to probably sell a full tray of those. So that's where the six packs might come in. I might take the time and the tedious time to put, you know, six different varieties of seed in each pack and have a, you know, hot pepper pack of six different kinds and sell it for 20 bucks. I don't know. We'll see what I can come up with. Um, so peppers, and then we get into our tomatoes. This, this is so there's four. There's another eight, 12, 16. 20, 24, so I see a double, so I'm going to call it 28 either way, um, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52, 53, at least last year, I started 53 varieties of tomatoes. Um, and I'm, I had most of them come to, to fruit. They did. There was a few that I didn't get much from. Um, I did also discover that eggplants, and again, I think a, a small eggplant in, in this size is going to sell well for a dollar to two dollars, three dollars. I don't know what I'll get from them, but I basically try to get you to buy a few and then just knock a price down and barter. But I think the eggplants will do well. We had the basic black, and I had a white, a white and a black eggplant, and then the one pink rosa. They worked out well. Um, let's see. Yeah, I tried things like chives and herbs, and it, I'm I'm struggling with them. Um, they're a little more delicate. Then we got into our peppers. Unfortunately, I lost a, a lot of the peppers that I had because of a frost as well. So you know, you live and learn. Um, and I might have only had a dozen or so of the varieties of peppers, you know. But there were some that were interesting that I really was hoping to get. The um, 
Carolina Reaper, uh, I think a Scotch Bonnet rather, they did okay. I, I salvaged them. And I had enough of the, um, the bell peppers. So that's just a quick look at, at last year. And I don't know the counts. I'm not going to do the count as I show you, but I do have um, more variety now um, coming from this year. Take this one over here. To keep these now in a bin. This is, um, I basically had two orders I put in to Baker's Creek. One was kind of early and one was, ve one was very early because it was really like the end of fall and I just didn't want to have an opportunity. I didn't want to lose out on certain varieties. I, I may be able to identify which ones I'm talking about. We got the, uh, the lists for the, the number of seeds. I, I guess this is maybe, let's see, how many different varieties I bought. Um, 25, it's about 75, okay? Different varieties, excuse me. But we got our packing ship lists here for Baker's Creek. These are predominantly Baker's Creek seeds that I'll be talking about today. Um, I'm gonna keep this handy here. So before I get into the Baker's Creek, I did find a, a source here on Long Island called the Cauliflower Association in Riverhead, New York. And in which case I'm able to buy semi-bulk quantities of seed um, different a good example would be like this beefsteak red beefsteak tomatoes um, it's a bulk item for three dollars it is let's see I'm trying to read this it's a this is a quarter of an ounce all right uh, somebody can do the math in grams but what they're saying here is that um, there's going to be a lot of seeds in here <laughs> and at three dollars and fifty cents or three dollars in this case um, it's a lot of seeds. I would not be able to get this many beefsteak tomato seeds uh, in any, you know, seed pack around here at a retail store. So we have that. With that said, I have a large pack of beefsteak because I'll do quite a few of them. Um, we also were able to get some better volume seeds for low prices. Um, but I'm going to go with a, a yellow, or excuse me, they call it a white cherry yellow tomato. It's basically a... Um, what are those called? The Sun Gold. Um, and there's another version of it, the Carolina Gold. You know, they're versions of a small yellow sweet tomato, cherry tomato. But um, we do a lot of tomatoes. So in this season, I'm going to try to do some of the ones that people requested or that I taste, you know, thought tasted really well, plus ones that I think people are just going to say, oh, I get it. That tastes really good. Now, I have to think, is this going to be backwards to you? Hmm. I think so. Um, let me see what I've got to do to fix this and maybe I can fix it right away. Okay, I, I think this is going to work. Um, so, you know, we work with um, the seeds that we can get. And in the first few years when I was looking for seeds, the logic behind some of this, the economics was you know, if I go to the local retail store, let's say it's um, Home Depot, uh, I can get a packet of seeds for, let's say it's $3. Um, you know, this is a Baker's Creek. This one happens to be $4, all right? This is an heirloom, and there's only 10 seeds or probably about a dozen seeds in here. They give you a few extra. Um, this one is called an orange accordion. It's a great tomato. Had them big. They, they, they were everything you'd want a tomato to be especially if you're looking for a tomato that looks like an heirloom, which when it comes to selling a tomato, people do look for the look, and they're not so worried about the taste, but this one was a good one. So this packet at $4, and it says 10 seeds, you know, do the math, that's 40 cents a seed, right? So um, I kind of looked at it and said, well, at 40 cents a seed, that's not even a bad deal, but if I can take a 40 cent seed and turn it into a $5 plant, the economics are pretty good. Now, granted, if I'm using a seed that's this expensive, the economics aren't great, theoretically. But if I buy seeds um, in this sense here, the, the uh, beef steaks that I have, this is, does it say? Uh, I don't think it's giving me a count so much as just a weight, which is a quarter of an ounce. You know, and a quarter of an ounce is, if you can see it from behind, it's up to about here in tomato plant seeds. So it's quite a bit. Um, I won't grow and sell that many, but at $3, you 
this is fractions of a penny each. Um, with the fractions of a penny each economics, you can see where it's almost like you're pulling money out of thin air. So what I do that hopefully draws some people into me that will get me that kind of you know, wacky return is I do specialize in the heirloom tomatoes. So I'm gonna go through the list of tomatoes that I have, some of which I've had before, some of which are just sort of marketing -y, gimmicky. Caught my eye and I thought I'd give it a try. So let's see what we've got here. Um, the orange accordion is a good one. The great white. The story is I had a whole tray of this, sold it to a landscaper. I didn't know what they were. He did. So I sold him the whole tray for, I think, maybe $25, which would have been probably like 72 plants. And maybe more, because there'd probably been more than one seed in many of the cells. So um, this one, I realized the next year was probably the best tasting and most amazing tomato I'd ever had, even though it doesn't turn red. So this one is a winner, all right? You wanna try an interesting tomato, this one's good. At least it's good from my perspective. Um, uh, Agropoli de Averno. Um, I, drew, I tried these last year. It was my only grape tomato, really, and the, the tray froze. I lost them all, so I didn't really get a chance last year. I'm gonna try these again this year. Um, Ozark Pink, um, just a nod to the uh, show Ozark and, you know, uh, Marty Bird. <laughs> Uh, should be an interesting tomato, not a big one. German Lunchbox, I have two packets in here because these were really amazing. They're prolific, they're a really hardy tomato that um, the skin is a little tough, but they last, man. They pull them off the plant and they'll be good for two weeks. Brad's Atomic, um, really great, amazing tomato. Uh, a little bit of a hard sell from the looks of somebody who doesn't want to try anything new, but for people who are willing to try it, they come back asking for them. Chocolate Pear. Can't beat a chocolate pear. Um, I've done the yellow pears and they go over pretty well. Uh, a lot of people will buy them if they have kids because the shape, it's kind of cute. So a chocolate pear should be easy. There's the other German lunchbox. Okay, so sun golds. Uh, people have a f fascination with the uh, yellow cherries. and they're, they're sweet so and they're prolific. So I've got these. Now I have some that are yellow and some that are orange. This is a, um, I'm gonna say this is a yellow version, okay? Um, <laughs> Tommy Toe is uh, just a small, sweet tomato, uh, I'm trying to think, originated in the Ozarks, so another Ozark Mountain tomato. A pink Fang is just an interesting looking heirloom. I, this may not sell very well at all. It may not actually taste very good. This might be just for my own edification as to whether it's worth it or not. Uh, the Mortgage Lifter, people ask for the Mortgage Lifter, and I see them in the Burpee and the um, Ferry Morse packages, so I figured if there's a good tomato seed out there, Baker's Creek is, in my opinion, a pretty good tomato seed. I've had the Mushroom Basket, another really large, um, I wouldn't say prolific, but you, it, it's so big that you only need that many, but they are great for selling as a, um, an heirloom tomato because they get all these funky ridges in them. And they taste good, all right? I bought uh, Baker's Creek's Cherokee Purple. See if there's any difference between a brand name and, you know, the Ferry Morse. Um, tomato called a Carbon or Carbone, depending on how we pronounce it. Just a dark red tomato. Looks like it'll be a fun one. I did grow Solar Flares last year. They were good. They looked kind of cool. Um, they tasted good. And I'm going to try them again this year. The Pineapple. Great orange, yellow, red tomato. Uh, great flavor, really sweet, um, good size. Um, I wish I would have had them last year, but I had a little debacle on getting the different varieties that I grew out in my own garden. So I had a lot of the same variety, which happened to be the sun golds, and I really had no use for them. The Dad's Sunset, equally good yellow, orange tomato, very sweet, um, nice size. It, it's a healthy, it grows well, not a hard plant to grow. Let's see, that looks like a bulk of my tomatoes. Let me see if I have more tomato in this batch here. So it makes me think these are more flowers. Yeah, okay, so those are, that was pretty much all of my um, tomatoes. And with the exception of some other more generic and easy to find, you know, regular red large cherry tomatoes, things like that, I'll get them. And in that case, it'll be just the, um, you know, whatever Ferry Morrison and that Burpee has because I won't do more than a tray or two of each because those will, they, they sell well, but I don't need to present them so well. So just as a quick flip through, 
We're gonna do things like Swiss chard, and this is in our garden, not to be sold. Onions in this garden. Um, the coleus, I don't know, I think this was a freebie maybe. I don't know. That's weird that I have this, unless I bought it from my wife. Uh, calendula is great, it really lasted well into the fall. Queen lime zinnia, green, um, another zinnia. Um, got some sunflowers. Oh, here's an eggplant, the, the Rosa Blanca. This one really did well, I'm gonna try them again. Um, Dragon's egg cucumber, we did them two years ago in our garden, we liked them, we'll try them again. Uh, we've got a Boston pickling, Long Island cheese. I don't know how many of these I'll actually get in my garden. The Aunt Molly's ground cherry, really easy to grow. Um, people really like them. There's an amazingly interesting fruit and they pretty much can grow anywhere. Um, we've got a Violet Sparkle, thought it was a neat purple pepper. Give that one a shot. Uh, Sugar Rush Peach, should be hot, should be interesting. Uh, I have a rainforest chili here. I'm not sure. Those are just different interesting colors. They gave me a, D, a free datil, if that's pronounced correctly. That's a hot pepper. Um, looks like a lysia, another pepper that I go for the looks. Um, the ahi chapato is a good one, um, but I didn't, in the first year I did them, I had a lot of them, but then I neglected them and they didn't do out too well. I planted one and it did well, but I'm going to try them again. Now here's another one called a Big Rainbow. I guess I did find some more tomatoes. Again, these are really not gonna be your run of the mills that I'm getting from Baker's Creek usually. We got the Black Beauty, uh, Bread and Salt, that's another one. I'm gonna do some radishes. This was interesting, I thought the watermelon, I think that is, or a Chinese red meat tomato uh, radish. Merlot lettuce, can't have enough of that. We got our curly parsley. We did some other stuff, but I like this uh, blue swan river mix. Um, we did some blue coneflower. I'll show it. I think I have the seeds coming up. There's a straw flower. These are kind of cool. They grow well. They're, they're easy and they're kind of pretty. Echinacea, no problem selling that. People come and if I have it, they'll take it. Um, they don't come for it, but if they see it, they'll buy it. Another interesting sunflower. I'm going to use these to sell them as small, um, you know, transplantable ones. Uh, Mexican sunflower, another interesting one. And of course we get into some of the, um, the herbs, basil, lavender I'm trying. I have some growing from last year, but it sells. I'll try it again. Nasturtiums, more echinacea. Uh, dahlias, I did well with them. Same as the, uh, the zinnias, they, they seem pretty easy. Um, chamomile, someone pointed out to me that chamomile really does draw in the butterflies. I had many of them, so we're gonna grow some more of this. Um, this is kind of a, you know, a crazy daisy. It's just hopefully going to be a funky looking flower that'll be happy. Um, a different lavender. We're going to try a, a different one again. Uh, a different nasturtium. Another different nasturtium. Oops. I guess we have, uh, another sunflower. Some basil. Basil and cilantro. So, let's see. Just the last few things I have over here. I think these are actually leftovers, which is a purple carrot. Uh, the mustard green was really tasty. Pink celery, a lot of fun. That was easy to grow and it looks pretty too. And I don't know if it's another Merlot. I think it is another Merlot, unless I counted this one twice. So all in all, it was a pretty big haul for Baker's Creek. Uh, we got everything we wanted and I'm seeing more that I still might consider making one more order. But that's it. So between the different containers and the types of seeds, the objective this year is to grow or have ready more varieties at the same time. Whereas in the past, I had to sort of rely on a, a sequential planting, right? Just a, uh, what do they call that? You know, when you build this schedule and you stick to it, and when one's done, you move the other one in because um, you'd only have room for so much. And that was partly due to just bad planning and, and logistics. Hopefully by the spring, I, I might have a, um, a greenhouse of some sort or a warm room or something I'm gonna call it, which is an outside plastic covered area that I can pump some heat into to keep a frost off, but more importantly to keep rain and, and bad weather from knocking my plants down. I also have a problem because this year I have to contend with two dogs, not even one, but it'll be two dogs possibly. And it's just gonna make for a you know, more challenging experience. But my objective would be to have, when I roll my wagon out, as many varieties of tomato available as possible. Because when I find somebody who's interested in these tomatoes, they pretty much wanna buy one of everything. And I'd like to have that opportunity. So 
I'm going to try different things and I'm hopefully going to have more varieties available at the same time. I'm also going to hopefully have things, you know, like these um, novelty trays and other size flower pots uh, growing with something. And if I'm successful there, I'm hoping to generate enough revenue on, on little things that actually sell for a lot more than a tomato plant and use the tomato plant almost as a loss leader. Maybe I'll just do one generic middle-sized tomato as the uh, one I advertise is like, you know, for $1.50 each and say, yeah, $1.50 for those, the others are $3 each. I don't know. I hate to be into the marketing so much as meeting people, but my curiosities sometimes are, well, am I selling it for too little or am I thinking that maybe people are paying more out of charity as opposed to thinking they're a good product? Whatever. I just, it's curious, fun, and um, hopefully I'll do better this year than I have in years in the past. With that said, I'm going to go shut this off and start the editing process. You all have a good growing season. Um, you'll see me in videos over the season, and we'll, I'm sure, document our progress. Okay, folks, you grow that. Bye-bye.